And we're continuing with Loving Life, All of It, a walk with cancer, compassion, and consciousness. And we are on Life Lesson 3. It's important to take time for myself. I am worthy. Journal entry, January 5th, 2011. This morning, more beautiful awareness came before and during listening to the magic mirror. Wow. One of the gifts of this journey is to truly being able to experience the energy of the music on levels I've never been able to access before. Prior to my diagnosis, I really didn't take time to listen to my body or love myself in the way I loved others. As a mother, wife, daughter, friend, colleague, and all the other roles I played, I always put everyone else before me. In the beginning, my diagnosis was an excuse to begin reversing that pattern of putting others first. The excuse quickly transformed into conscious, loving choices of self-care. As I remembered that one of my main lessons during this journey was to learn how to receive love for myself. It started by my willingness to simply slow down and listen inside. As many of you may know or can imagine, the time after diagnosis is scary. It's crazy, full of tests, appointments, waiting for results, decisions, more tests. It goes on and on. I was caught in this swirl of activity and found myself turning toward my music to help me slow down. The prior research we had conducted with cancer patients only affirmed the music's value in supporting my brainwaves and immune system function. That information helped my mind justify taking time for myself, since focused self-care was not a common practice for me up to this point in my life. I listened to the Magic Mirror CD at least once a day, and it became my sacred take time for myself therapy throughout my treatment. I still continue this ritual today. What a magical experience to receive my own gift of music for myself. I thought to ask myself, where did this pattern of putting other people first originate? When I was 35 years old, I decided to find my birth mother. I knew there was a possibility of her not wanting to meet me. So I prepared myself for this possible rejection by working with various healing techniques to bring old patterns to my awareness. It was an eye-opening experience to realize how much of my outwardly loving actions were actually motivated from a place of fear. I was nice to everyone because on some deep unconscious level, I didn't want them to give me away. My journal writings from 2009 brought deeper levels of this behavior to my awareness. My unconscious fear of being, quote, rejected by my creator. 
my feelings of unworthiness around my own birth and my fears of abandonment. These unconscious cellular vibrational aspects within my body had been motivating my actions and choices for years. It was time to bring those colors within my rainbow pyramid back into balance by recognizing the old patterns of behavior and choosing more loving choices for myself, knowing and believing that I am worthy and deserving. The easiest way for me to visualize the concept of embracing old patterns of behavior is once again through the rainbow pyramid drawn by our sun. Imagine every color in the rainbow pyramid as a different life experience. There's the rainbow pyramid right here. A different life experience, feeling, thought, belief, action, anything and everything that's ever happened in your life. Some colors are bright and shining, while other colors are repressed, hidden, and almost invisible. For me, my day-to-day -day walk with life involves awakening and embracing every color in my rainbow pyramid, even those colors that I've forgotten or tried to forget. My desire is to learn and remember as much about myself as possible. This lesson continued to expand and grow during my journey to love. A journal entry on July 22nd, 2011. Wow, living from the inside out really takes so much consciousness. These old patterns of focusing on the outside are sneaky little tricksters. Time to bring it back in, which my body has been trying to tell me all week. It's so much easier when I slow down and listen. As I look back at the week, I can see simple little alterations in my schedule and routine and how they may have contributed to my slight drop in energy, which also could be my sensitivity to the full moon energy, but it's all connected. This week I missed two days of miso soup, two days of my touch for health exercises, my Monday evening yoga class, and I haven't meditated TM for years, I mean, for days. <laughs> I have, however, listened to the magic mirror every day. And when I give myself that time, I just collapse into the pillows and fall into the music because I'm still out of balance. On Tuesday, I could hardly keep my eyes open because my inner self was trying to pull me back inside. Then on Wednesday, I felt more energy. And of course, I fell into production mode, getting bills paid, packing up CDs, writing invoices, doing errands, my normal routine. Wow, when will this new patterning finally become my way of being from the inside out? Such diligence, compassion, and self-love are necessary for this shift to occur and really take hold. I get that this is not just my personal patterns that are unwinding. It's my whole light line, genetic heritage that I hold within my cellular, cellular memory that's coming to conscious awareness and repatterning. Thank goodness for the origins process, which helps me see these energies reflected in their specific patterns. Staying conscious and aware of my choices every choice and how it resonates from within me is key. If I'm taking action outside, then where is that action cord from within me? Is it habitual? 
or is it truly an action that supports me living my purpose? Today's another day, and writing this update was a beautiful way to start. I am grateful for the nine months of treatment that gifted me the time and opportunity to learn this lesson of taking time for myself. The hidden resistance underneath this lesson became so obvious as I remembered and honored my deeper feelings of worthiness. Worthy, valuable, and precious are synonyms that were intertwined with my cellular memories of being adopted. How could I be any of those words was an old belief and self-judgment that existed on levels below my conscious awareness. Slowly, as I embraced each one of those words within me, I truly began believing that I was worth it. And the quiet time for reflection. If you feel comfortable moving into this experience, close your eyes and take a deep breath in through your nose. Hold for a few moments, then exhale through your mouth slowly. And repeat a few times. And when you feel calm and relaxed, allow the word worthy to come forth from within you. How does this word feel to you? And take a few moments to write down your thoughts and your feelings. Mm, the word worthy. And then allow the phrase, it's important to take time for myself to come forth from within you. And how does that feel? It's important to take time for myself. And just take a few moments and write down your thoughts and your feelings about life lesson three. What's awakening within you right now? It's important to take time for myself. See you next time.